What's up, Internet? We're doing a uh, uh, another stream cooldown type thing with a game on my Xbox. This man right here, Caleb, needs to play. Apparently so. He's playing Bread, which functionally feels like one of those YouTube bait games, but it's actually a real game, and I actually quite like Bread. I haven't gotten very far, but I, I enjoy it. Uh, we, we've got a couple other games we're going to do, but... Um, I have to wait for the Retro Freak to boot up because I've got my entire game library on there and that thing takes a little while to set up proper, so we're going to do this first. Okay. Now, if you're not familiar with Bossa Studios, they produced Surgeon Simulator and this is actually the prequel to that. I Am Bread is the prequel to Surgeon Simulator? Yes. There, There is story about this. Okay. So, you want to go to play? And you could go to story mode. Let's turn that. And you want to do kitchen. Because this game gets real hard really fast. Yeah, I have no doubt. Now, the premise is... You are a piece of bread on its epic quest to become toast. And you have to be as delicious as possible. And there is plot here. From the therapy barn, apparently. I never read that before. <laughs> Just the therapy barn. Now, the thing about this game is it is Shadow of the Colossus. Kind of. <laughs> so, basically, the left button, the left bumper, left trigger, right bumper, and right trigger all control the various corners of your piece of bread. And you have to try and walk your piece of bread over to a toaster to become toasted. And you can pivot on individual uh, corners as well. Oh now, my gosh, this bread is so stale it broke a plate. Yeah. Bun fortunate. <laughs> Spill the salt. This game is nothing but bad puns, by the way. Oh, that I can understand. Okay, uh, another thing you have to worry about is touching the floor is bad. This is a whole game of the floor is lava, because of course you're going to make your piece of bread very, very dirty, and you don't want that. No! Oh, your edibility is going down, and it goes down really, really quick. And you're in the muddy footprints now. Oh... Okay, I'm going to have to try that again. <laughs> Play again. Oh, I just had to figure out how the yeah. indicator worked. Yeah, no, I get you. It's a little bit... The, the menus in this game are not the greatest. And you can kind of get a better view of where you're going. You can climb walls and everything. You just can't touch the floor. The trick, however, is uh, you have to avoid dirt, and you have to uh, watch your grip meter because you can only hold on for so long before you let go. So if you're trying to climb a wall, you might instantly fall to the ground and that's no good. And now you've got jam. <laughs> because jam physics. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, if you press B right there, you will hold on to a thing. So, like, if you get next to something with the corner, the corner can grab it and, like, move it around if you need it to. I've not seen a lot of value in that, but you can hold objects. Oh, no! Yeah. <laughs> now, fortunately, you're on a relatively clean piece of floor. But uh, the first time you did this, you kind of had the right idea going on the chair and knocking it over. Because the toaster's off in that direction. Yeah. But this game, it is ridiculously hard, but it is goofy and fun. And there's a lot of modes to it, too. Of course, there's the standard bread mode. There is a speed racing bagel wheel mode. There is a cracker bread collect the cheese mode. There is a mode where you uh, try and toast bread in zero gravity. 
Interesting. Which I think we're going to have to see a little bit of, but that th this game has so much content, and it, it's actually a really cheap game, and I think it's just delightful in its concept. Even though it does feel like one of those, we're definitely making a game just to make dumb videos on the internet to go viral. I, I think this is... Uh... <laughs> You're gonna want to avoid those ants. Yeah. They'll uh, lower your edibility. I'm already pretty darn low. <laughs> yeah, at, at times you just kind of have to nudge it all the way down. You can also modify the camera angle if you don't like it. Oh, shoot. Which might be helpful. <laughs> There's the toaster over there. Oh, God. Yeah. Your best best to climb the refrigerator, I think. <laughs> the physics in this game are a little weird when it comes to individual objects. This is the world's premier bread simulator, and I think it does it well. I loaf toast. This game is pretty fun. <laughs> it, it's ridiculously hard, though. You kind of got to wiggle your uh, corners at something so you can grab something. It takes a long time to get used to that control scheme. It, it's weird, but when, once you get it, it kind of makes sense. Oh yeah, it's starting already to... It, it's just sort of a matter of figuring out, okay, which one's the bumper, which one's the trigger. Oh no. <laughs> uh, your breakfast does this every day. If you want a singular piece of toast, this is what it has to go through. <laughs> Avoid the kitty litter. Where's the kitty litter? It's by the toaster. <laughs> Why? Who in their right mind puts kitty litter near their toaster, like? <laughs> hey, a watermelon. Oh, God. You're gonna want a right bumper as soon as you get that option. <laughs> this is so stressful. I would just swing out and try and grab the drawer. left bumper once you oh. <laughs> this is so stressful oh that camera angle is not doing you favors I think in situations like this, your best option is to try and pivot around one point. Oh. Right bumper. Nope, oh, that's the left one. Yeah. Yeah, it, it kind of messes with your head how this works. Okay, now you're going to want to slide out. Uh, okay, now you're going to want to climb and you're going to want to do it fast. <laughs> or do that. Oh! It does not help that the uh, rumble goes crazy once you're starting to lose grip. Okay. 
Should be able to make it now. Oh, you caught the edge on one of your eggs. Okay. <laughs> We're playing dangerous here. Yeah, I think you're going to want to pivot from one point instead of focusing on a whole side. And just try and get a corner up on that lip. Nope. Oh, God. <laughs> it begins again. Oh, I, I'm just gonna. I'm just gonna have to let it oh on that God, one. Oh God! Yeah, that was. Oh, that was. That was a clenchy moment. <laughs> that was scary. That that was kind of painful. <laughs> just trying and trying and trying, and it's like, no, you will not. Okay. Now that will uh, increase your edibility to 100% regardless. So that is your gold tanuki suit jam. Stressful. What gets really scary is when you get to points where you have to like actively fling yourself off of stuff. Yeah, I can understand that. Oh. <laughs> now there's ants on me. That sucks. Where did they come from? Like, I know they're right there, but... Oh, no, that's dirt. Never mind. No, you, you stepped in the footprint. That's what I mean. I thought it was the ants for a moment. <laughs> Ooh. Also, I'd avoid uh, grabbing the Jenga tower. That is a disaster waiting to happen. Yeah, I have no doubt about that. I've done that before. chips we are unhealthy toast today just dirt and lint and potato chips and butter oh god <laughs> he's a madman yeah I would really hold on to that corner oh god <laughs> Oh, no, 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 no. I drop. Drop, drop, drop. There you go. Okay. It's safer than having to fall to the ground. Yeah. those doors, but it's really hard to as well. Oh, the ants. The physics! Oh! Oh! Oh, it looks like you're gonna do it. Oh! <laughs> Easier if you just climb and try and go around this thing. Oh, 
sure. Okay. Yeah. All right. There we go. Box. Oh, no, 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 no. Oh, lordy. <laughs> Okay, now welcome to something very stressful. If you want to get back there, you're going to have to fling yourself across. I mean, I can't uh, just stick myself to... Oh. oh, you might be able to. The wall looks a little dirty. Oh, no, it seems to be fine. You're basically going to have to hang off a singular point, though, if you want to do it quickly without to running out of stamina. probably don't want to go in that water. <laughs> no, I'm going to see if I can fling myself. How do you do that? Okay, what you're going to want to do is line yourself up so that you're parallel with uh, where it's going. So yeah, kind of like that. Then you're going to want to go left bumper, right bumper, kind of like that. And then you're just going to want to go whoosh and let go while you're midair. Yeah, like that. And then once you get across, you're going to want to hit all the buttons at once. <laughs> okay. Okay. Well, you're not in the water, that's... Oh, crap. Come on. Now the problem is, that wall over there is dirty. <laughs> so you're probably gonna have to open up the microwave and use that door or fling yourself across, but that could be real risky. And you gotta put a lot more strength in when you fling, you just gotta go full force. Yeah, that may never happen. <laughs> oh, the dirt. Okay, you're gonna wanna grab the door of the microwave. That should open it up, I think. Try going on the other end, towards the wall. Okay, just trying to get... Yeah. <laughs> Controlling your piece of bread, it's not the most precise mode of movement ever. Oh, door's not opening. I guess you're gonna just have to fling yourself. I'd suggest going from the top of the microwave. Yeah, oh, nope, still too much. <laughs> it, it takes a while to work in your head what you need to uh, do to move in this game. Interesting. <laughs> oh. Yeah, okay, there you go. I'm just gonna slowly nudge your way over there. I want to line yourself up a little bit better with the. Uh, yeah. And you're just gonna want to fling yourself full force and hold all the buttons when you launch. Might want to go a little bit close to the edge too. Just to get the most distance. So like that? Yeah. And then just fling it as hard as you can. And then hold all the buttons. Okay, well. See, it'll take some time for me to figure out how to fling it. And it, would, it usually means like, oh, there we go. Just don't end up back on the ground because you're not doing so great in your head ability. All right. Now you just gotta toast yourself. And not land in the kitty litter. Which is, of course, a place you should uh, put right next to your toasting implements. And in your kitchen in general. You, oh, you... it's that sort of placement for the kitty litter. I was th I thought it was on the counter. No. Like, why would they do something no, like that? No, it's literally like next to the counter. But it's like, if you miss an end in that, you're basically dead. Well, I would hope so, just because, you know, at that point, I'd want to end my life, too. <laughs> now you're going to want to slowly cook both sides of you. There'll be a meter that'll show up once you're 
actually properly toasting. I, th I don't think it actually fits in there. I always just toast it while sitting on top of it, though. Kind of like that, yeah. You just kind of have to line it up with it. Oh. Okay, come on. Start toasting. Could be your potato chips are giving you extra mass. It's not wanting to toast anymore. <laughs> Try falling in there. I've seen people climb the wall and try and fling themselves into it. <laughs> okay, this is starting to get infuriating. <laughs> Excellent. Or just wait, this is just the story mode. I try and write bumper and slot. Ooh, yeah, that's a bit much. This game does feel a little unfinished for what that's worth, but. It's goofy enough that I think it's enjoyable. Come on, toaster, toast. As Mario taught us, all toasters toast, toast. Ooh. That's as far as I've gone, and I'm about to just fling myself into the litter. Out of <laughs> that would be fun, too. There's other game modes we could try. Or try one of the other games that you... Yeah, I'm not sure if the uh, thing's ready yet. Well... Well, it's been way more than 10 minutes. Yeah, it's a little finicky, though. You missed the kitty litter. <laughs> yes, I did. <laughs> okay, uh, we'll see about the rest of this. We'll cut to when we get the rest of this up. Okay, so this is Fire Emblem Requiem. And I'm pretty sure whoever designed this is either very, very smart, or very, very stupid, or a masochist or something, because... I can't beat the prologue. I've tried to go through it 14 times. You actually watched me bitch and moan about this. Mm -hmm. And I would say you're probably a smarter person than I am, so I want to see you try and beat it. <laughs> Prove it! I think you can skip this if you want. I don't think the story's all that important. Yeah, you're going to want to restart. All right. So, yes, this, this plays off Fire Emblem 1, as far as I can tell. So. Seven. The first one we got, okay? It's not Sacred Stones, that's the important thing. It's not the one I liked. Even though a lot of people think it's way too easy. I think you can skip this too if you're not interested, which... Why would you be? Okay. So here's the deal. You have two lords. If either of them die, it's game over. You have a bunch of random units you can't control. There's two people out on the field you can recruit. I don't know how to do that. Uh, they are down below you if you want to go take a look. It's these two. I, I'm pointing at the screen. It's uh, her and the archer above her. Uh, okay. I don't know how to recruit them. And I want to say about three levels in, a dragon shows up. And you're expected to defeat all this without losing any characters. Any of your story characters, anyway. I have lost to this 14 times straight, and I gave up. Because I think this is just incompetent. Why? We'll, we'll see if uh, Caleb can do it. Hmm. Damage output is interesting. <laughs> I will say this is one thing I like about uh, Game Boy Advance Fire Emblem, is it's really easy to make your own custom sprites. Yes. Because they all just use generic I um, item pools for sprite work. So if, uh, if you look at any of the Fire Emblem sprites, you can find like 
20 different commonalities in terms of noses because they all just use the same nose sprite. And same with mouths and uh, hairs and stuff. So if you want to make like custom sprites and fire emblem, it's ridiculously easy. I did it for a while. Now, I've tried a bunch of different strategies. I've tried going straight out and killing everything. I tried to turtle up at the little camps that'll heal you. And for whatever reason, nothing I did seemed to actually work all that well, so... I'm out of actual strategic planning for this. But I want to see someone beat this, because I sure as hell can't. And this is the tutorial level. I like on how to turn two you're you're pausing if I survive. This would be a crazy move range. Yep. They should not be able to move that far. No. No, like the Your best bet from my experience is just to try and hide in the bushes and take that uh, evasion bonus. That's the only thing I can think. Like it's Possible, and she hits harder. What is? But yeah, is this this is not a game design sensibly. Yes, the type of the archer. And and I'll point out there are two people you can recruit, but you're surrounded by control or units you can't control who will go after them. Yep. So. Like, I'm just saying survive and beat this chapter. I don't care how you do it. I just... I've never been able to do it. And I don't know if they just tweak the numbers in the background, but even when you've got, like, an evasion bonus, it seems really hard to actually not get murdered. So clearly this Val is the superior... Yeah, she plays a little closer, I think, to a Myrmidon style character. She just hits a little faster. Yeah, so near as I can tell, to recruit these people, you have to recruit the wimpy character and then use her to recruit the uh, healer, I think, is what they're trying to tell us here. But again, even getting to that point's a miracle because, again, a dragon shows up and just goes crazy on you. Or a dragon knight. Okay, they're making progress towards us. Yeah. They seem just a lot tankier than they should be, too. Um, not quite. The main issue is just the fact that they cannot hit or shit. Um, like, your damage is so off balance. Because, like, she's got normal HP pool, she's got normal- actually, no, those are higher for their class. Hmm. Yeah, there's no way you're not going to get attacked, unless you back up. Strategy games. Very, very tense. And also very boring at the same time. <laughs> Archer's still alive. Not that he's really your archer.
See, this is where it's gonna be game over because the, uh, unless. Why did that not move? What is wrong with the AI in this? Oh no, there we go. <laughs> Yep, exactly what I expected to happen. Game over. Tutorial. Uh, again, this is the prologue chapter. It is feasible. Um, see, I'm, I'm just very confused by the fact that... You resumed, not restarted. Just gonna take you back to you dying again. Weird. That should, that should be like the abs... Why does it save state like that? I... yeah, this... This is not designed sensibly. <laughs> no, there, there are some... there are some design flaws. I'm not too sure... I'm not too sure that the, uh, the problem is... Inherently the... Like, why the hell is he all the way out here? Yeah, you, your best bet, I think, is just hiding in, in the bushes and hoping your AI guys do something. Like, I just wish I could control the AI guys. That might actually make this feasible. See, I've played Fire Emblem titles with larger amounts of soldiers on the battlefield. Uh, what was it called? Um, Genealogy of the Holy War, which you do have in your set of ROMs here for the Super Famicom. Yeah. Is It has an absolutely enormous battlefield. Well, but all your units are horseback, are on horseback, and they can, uh, they can hit things. Yeah. Yeah, no, I, I've played it because, um, I, I've got this Super Nintendo version, I think. Was that Super Nintendo? Yeah, yeah. The Holy War. yeah, I've got the Super Nintendo version, that's why I've got it's it It's an outstanding here, game. Yeah, it's good, but... I don't know, it still feels a little bit better balanced than this. This seems... Oh, no, no, that's what I'm getting at. That's what I'm getting at, is Genealogy of the Holy War has the whole, uh... Has the large map, large unit number of this, and I think that's where people got the idea to go with, uh... The, with this like uh, collection of enemy types. Yeah. I'm glad I swapped swords. But I am really glad right now I swapped swords. Also, the the experience gain is pretty off for. Uh, or so it feels for what uh, I've been achieving. Yeah. See, I've cleared out most of that wave. Because, like, he killed a bunch of them. She got more experience from that kill than he did. Oh, that's because he's technically the Jagan. That's right. He's probably his enhanced. This is not a game I think people could just walk in and play. And it definitely doesn't have the same difficulty curve as, say, like, the actual proper ones. Yeah. Alright, level. Hooray! That was a bad level, wasn't it? Yes. I've seen levels where you get like one to everything or like plus five to some things. Oh, there goes that guy. You gotta love those one percent crits. Oh, uh, thanks. They're big meat shield man. You did your job. 
completely ineptly. As did you. And then, of course, because these aren't your playable characters, you're not getting any actual experience from them. Nope. It does give me a valid reason, though, to, uh... Why did you block him off? Oh god, that's a poor choice. Yeah, like, if... If you could at least control your teammates, you know, this... This could actually be kinda doable. It wouldn't be easy, but it could be doable. Also don't understand their working of the weapon triangle here, because that should be superior to Mr. Axe down here. Oh, did it's they change not, it? That's weird. But it's not. The militant edge, though, is, but... take the axe that's going to be following it up? Yes. It only does 8, 9 damage at most. Okay, that's a dodge. In my experience, like, every time you'll see you'll dodge, you'll get hit, too. So I think the dodge and uh, hit rates are a little bit shenanigans. Why are you attacking her? Because he can. Thank you! Yes, yeah. okay. <laughs> Relying on AI you can't control. That's a horrible thing. Yeah, it seems like there's no actual interaction between them either. I, I just, I don't get it. I'm gonna try something that's a little risky, but... Well, you know, <laughs> you're probably gonna make more progress in this than I am. Well, she's dead. Dead, or that was what you were supposed to do. If that's what you're supposed to do, that's a little obtuse, don't you think? Yes, but this is not well designed to <laughs> some extent. So. That is very true. <laughs> I thought healers couldn't heal themselves. Uh... They can in the newer games. Uh, it's been a while since I've played like an actual proper Fire Emblem game. Oh. We're gonna die, man. <laughs> yeah. She's dead. The lack of crits on your side is also kind of worrying. Yeah, then this guy shows up. Welcome to Fire Emblem Requiem, where what is fairness? <laughs> yeah, I'll take the double strike. Come on, crit, 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 crit. Oh, come on, you loser. <laughs> what am criticals? She's in rough shape. Yes, she is, but I am gonna risk it because I know that I don't get the objective of this map. I don't either. I think it's literally just kill everything. This game is not terribly clear on anything, honestly. At least not what I was expecting to happen. Yeah, I'm a little surprised that they go straight for her. 
Okay, that was good. That was more what I was expecting. Well, see, there's the issue. What the frick is this parrier's edge? Is it just like, okay, look, you can you can block uh, you can block spears. I'm like, but you're still lower on. I don't get it. Yeah, no, this. This is, is poorly designed in so many ways because I have no idea what the map objective is. You got characters who seem like they should be recruitable, but the only thing you can do to them is kill them. Yeah. And the only other person who could potentially recruit them is the guy who is not even in your control and he decides to attack them anyway, so it's not like... Yeah, and your entire team is completely unplayable. Because they're all NPCs. Yeah. That's that's terrible. Alright, uh... Oh, you gotta go, don't you? Yeah. Okay, uh, that has been this. We had plans for something else, but we can't do that yet. Hey, cameo by Lynn. I like her a lot. Anyway, uh, this has been a terrible Fire Emblem hack, plus bread, which is awesome. Um, if you got better Fire Emblem hacks, let me know, because... There are definitely better ones out there. They can't be as bad as this, although I do prefer more the uh, Sacred Stone-style freedom of uh, building your characters and also training on the fly. Anyway, this has been this. Uh, we'll see you next time. Peace out, Internet. Ciao.